It is said that when the name of Imam Al-Hujjah is said, one should stand. So inshallah, whilst we mention the name of Imam Al-Hujjah, stand and come for inshallah. For the love of Imam Al-Qa'im, salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And inshallah, another salawat in honor. In honor of the man who we all gathered here for today, Sayyid al-Shuhada, Aba Abdullah al Hussein, Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And a final salawat to compensate for the tears of Sayyid al-Zahra, his dear mother, and inshallah we can console her heart with the salawat of the loudest of our voices, Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد الله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين المفلومين وصلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا حجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا صاحب الأصر والزمان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصدق صدق الله العلي العظيم وتواصل بالصدق صدق الله العلي العظيم أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد الحمد لله في يت النظية this event comes around just after the days of Ashura come to an end and as the beginning of the Arba'iniyyah, the 40th after begins. Many of us within this room are going to be honored with the opportunity to head to the Holy Lands in the next few hours or days. To be amongst those 15, 20, 25 million who are going to call and look at those golden domes and say, Labbaik ya Hussein, Labbaik ya Abbas who are going to go and visit each of the shuhada within that area and going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their interse intercession to forgive their sins. And many of us that will go will experience the walk, which I believe is a ziyara in itself. A ziyara of Sayyid Zainab, Sayyid Ruqayya, the women and the children of Karbala. And it was that walk that was so often referenced to as one of the hardest times after Karbala. The shame that was brought upon the perfect family of Ali Muhammad. And it's for this reason that our mourning didn't stop or doesn't stop on the day of Ashura. It continues and continues, it continues. And that's what tonight's for. It's to ensure that continuation takes place but for that continuation to take place in a language that all of us here understand, a language that all of the viewers that are going to be watching will understand, and inshallah, a language that will continue to grow in its impact in the azar of Imam al Hussein because of its importance to the generations that are soon to come. Today, you'll be seeing a number of reciters who will take to the pulpit not with the intention of making you cry, but with the intention of reminding you of an event that will then most likely make you cry. And it's on this night and on this day that I ask you to leave any sort of embarrassment at the door. When you enter today and when you sit here and when the poetry starts, imagine you're elsewhere and I need not say where. Leave any of that embarrassment that you have about wailing elsewhere. Tonight is a night to engage, to engross yourself, to immerse within the azar, in the remembrance, and in the sha'a'ir of Imam al Hussein, the rituals of Imam al Hussein. Before we get into it all, I must say from this point, because I may not get an opportunity at a latter point, 
our extended thanks to the Leicester Jamaat. You can see what a wonderful job they've already put on for us by hosting us, allowing us to use their center for this project. And I feel it's quite apt to share a hadith which really replicates what they've done for us today. And this comes from none other than Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad. And he says, no sooner does a Muslim serve a group of Muslims than Allah will then give him servants equal in number to the group, but this time in paradise. And that's what this brotherhood and sisterhood is about. To allow their doors to be open, to come in with no bureaucracy involved, come in and just remember the one who we serve day to day. And inshallah, that's what we're going to do. So before we welcome our first reciter, perhaps something to set the scene. Tonight, we're going to specifically spend a lot of time, especially in the Masaib, on remembering the four or five-year-old young daughter of Imam al Hussein. Now, I know there's been a lot of stuff in the news in the past few days about the tragic events across Paris, Beirut, Baghdad, etc., and it's a norm for us to hear about this. But I want you to get in tune with the thought of a daughter, of a niece, of a sister, of a cousin that you may have of that age. And let her be your focal point for this evening. And let that emotion sink in. We'll continue with that a little bit later. But to start tonight's proceedings, I welcome a name who I'm sure many of you recognize here in Leicester, mostly known for his recitations in Urdu, but has now taken on the banner of English alongside him as well in serving Imam Hussein. We welcome Brother Imran Dato with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-ayn rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before I begin, uh, let us remember the innocent lives that have been lost over the recent days uh, against the terror attacks, uh, whether it be in Syria, Beirut, Paris, wherever. For those innocent lives, let us remember them with a Surat al Mubarakatul al Fatiha. Uh, this poem uh, that inshallah I will be reading today uh, is regarding the princes of Sayyidah Zainab alayhim as salam On and Muhammad. And uh, it is about when she is crying out to them after their death. And this one was written uh, by a dear friend of mine and inshallah we will have the honor of listening to him tonight as well. Brother Nuri Sardar, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for his efforts. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. <coughs> Go to sleep, my precious sons. Go to sleep, my precious sons. That have upon them weeping my 
Brothers, burnt out candles and blood red feathers. Goodbye, my sons, Ona and Muhammad. Forgive me, sons, if in death you don't hear your mother weep. I see nothing but beauty watching you in your blood sleep. But my eyes are distracted watching fire intense I know you lay there in the desert but I'm choked by smoke and my lungs hurt yearning the scent of Abbas's shirt goodbye my sons How can I weep for the sons that my arms would once cradle when I watch the smoke and wind sway as the empty cradle and see Rabab's skin turned gray as she stands by its idol. Our throats strangled by smoke in the air, yearning patience whilst yearns as despair. As they cry, where is our father? Goodbye, my sons, Ona and Muhammad. If I weep for you, who will weep for that candle burnt out? The lion cub of Mujtaba, his body thrown about. The child who wed the sword in faith with no ounce of doubt. I can't leave for a morning alone for the strong reached a child's bone the groom that chose dust before a throne goodbye my sons Ona and Muhammad forgive me own oh, if my eyes forget you and your brother in Akbar's body I see Muhammad my grandfather and his head was struck and his head was struck just like my father's head in Kufa I saw an Ali's head struck again two Ali's were too much oh what pain and by him fell his father Hussein.
Goodbye, my sons. Onans, Muhammad. How shy I am to weep and catch my tears with my two hands when I see the hands of my Abbas strewn upon the sands when usually I call his name and straight away he stands I called his name complaining of the but watched as the whites of his eyes burst Before his flag fell Abbas fell first Goodbye my sons Onans Muhammad I will not we upon you, nor will I provide you a shroud, because for Hussein's broken body no shroud was allowed, like your master when your heads are raised on spears raise them proud and when I see each head on a spear forgive me if I don't shed a tear I weep for the head of my brother Goodbye, my sons, Onans, Muhammad. Goodbye, my sons, Onans, Muhammad. Go to sleep, my precious son. صلى على محمد وآل محمد أحسنت أحسنت and for the love of سيد زينب in bidding farewell to her sons أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد It wasn't so long ago when at this time lots of us would have been saying we're going to Syria to go and see Sayyidah Zainab herself, to go and see Sayyidah Rukhaya herself. And it just makes the heart think she saw her father killed, she saw her parents killed, she saw her sons killed, she saw her nephews killed, she saw her niece die, she saw her brothers being killed, beheaded, captured, and yet, and yet still, still now, now we still, we still can't, can't go and see her and stand next to her. To the extent, the extent that her husband doesn't even recognize her when she comes back to the city. There's a beautiful narration from Nabi Allah Muhammad when he says to Sayyidah Fatima Salam Allahi Alayha Allahumma Salla Ala Muhammad He says, O oh, Fatima. Every, Every eye, eye shall, shall be weeping on the day of judgment. Every, Every eye, eye shall, shall be weeping on the on day, day of judgment, judgment. except it's the eye which has shed, shed tears, tears over the tragedy of Hussein. O oh, Fatima, Fatima, every eye, eye shall shed tears on the day of judgment, day of judgment. Except, except the eyes which have shed tears over the tragedy of Hussein. For surely, that I shall be laughing and shall be given the glad tidings and the bounties and the comforts of paradise. 
Let our eyes be amongst those eyes which receive those bounties tonight. Let the tears flow. Let the agony rip within your heart. And let Sayyid the Fatima, if she is attending today's majlis, let her hear you, let her see you mourn for her children. We'll continue our emotive night with the poets of the Ahlul Bayt, our dearest Nuri Sardar. Welcome him with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Before I begin, uh, can I kindly request a Surat Al-Fatiha for Raja Azgar Ali, son of Raja Sajwal, Sajwal Khan, who passed the day in Pakistan. Bismillah ar-Rahman أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بار محمد وآل محمد سلوات I would like to begin by saying how envious I am of each and every single one of you here today who is sitting in this gathering, honoring the daughter, the son of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, Imam Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam. And indeed, I would say this is one of the purest majalis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Why do I say that? Because some of the earliest narrations we have of a majlis or a gathering and mourning of Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam is when Imam Radha alayhi salam told Da'bal Khazai, Da'bal, recite me some poetry about Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam to which Da'bal replied in the form of poetics. He said, oh Imam Radha, I wish that Fatima al-Zahra was there on that day to see what they'd done to your grandfather Abu Abdullah. And indeed today we are here mourning Abu Abdullah through poetry. And indeed, I want to take you right now back to the day of Ashura. And they say Ashura is a day like no other. But just for today, just for today, even though there is no day like Ashura, I want, I want you all to take yourselves back to Ashura, that day of Ashura. Here, get away from here in Leicester, back to the plains of Karbala on that day. After everything has happened, everyone is gone. Ali al-Akbar is gone. Qasim is gone. Awn al-Muhammad are gone. Even Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam is gone. And all Sayyidah Zainab can see are the bodies that litter the plains of Karbala. <laughs> she walks on those desert plains, and beside her are the orphan daughters of Abdullah al-Hussein salam. <laughs> but you know what breaks the heart? A poet says, as she walks, she sees the daughters of Hussein coming closer towards her with every step. She wonders why they come so close that they grab her abaya. What's the problem? The problem is they see their father, Abu Abdullah Hussein Hussain, there on the dust. And indeed there, Hussein lies on the ground, where I see the night won't come as the sun has delayed its descent. I see stars turn to earth, leaving the seven skies bent. I see meteors fall and an eclipse left in torment, watching Zainab upon the body of Hussein lament. It's as if the sun collapses, watching the sun fallen, drowned within his own blood, and with arrows he is ridden. I watch the mighty ark of Noah succumb to that flood. The beautiful Hashimi skin of Hussein drowned in his blood. 
The petals of Muhammad crushed and stolen its rosebud, trampled by horses and his blood mixed with Karbala's mud. The one who is the master of the highest of heavens left scattered upon the earth and complained to him his bones. I say the swords did not kill Hussein that day. I say the swords did not kill Hussein, rather they fell prostrate, left in awe that Hussein, the Lord of the worlds, could create the darkness of the sky, the stars refused to decorate, as Zainab mourns the burning city and its fallen gate. Seeing the mountain fallen crushes the mountain of patience. Her hijab hushes her cries while screaming is his silence. He tells her, Zainab, my sister, daughter of the one who killed Marhab, daughter of a struck head and daughter of a broken rib, leave my body here and take with you Farwa and Rabab. Cry your tears, O Zainab, but cover them with your hijab. Cry your tears, O Zainab but cover them with your hijab. The smoke and ash of the burning tents won't bring you despair. If the whole world burns, O Zainab, you'd still cover your hair. When I see you, Zainab, I see Maryam's chastity. In your hijab, I see Zahra's flag still flying proudly. I don't see a woman covered in ash alone with no family. I don't see a woman covered in ash alone with no family. I see a queen upon a throne who says, I see nothing but beauty. I am beheaded and the universe sweeps at my state. But around your hijab, O oh Zainab, I see even the planets rotate. Zainab replies, O oh, Hussein, we've sacrificed so much. Will people listen? I see a trampled body that to the stars would once glisten. Will future people heed and take heed to our lesson? Will future people heed and listen to your lesson? Or will it be in vain the cry of me and your children? Hussein replies, O oh, Zainab, by the river of my blood, when people hear our story, they'll bow and submit to God. O oh, Zainab, by my crushed body that Shimmer would behead, by the skin that Fatima kissed that was to the swords fed, by my thirst that was quenched only by the blood that I bled, every woman that falls in love with me by you is led. Every woman that falls in love with me by you is led. Every lover of your story shall proudly wear a veil telling the world that they are inspired by Zainab and her tale. So Zainab takes the children as her round her they all huddle and she takes Rabab away from Azgar's empty cradle. They ask their auntie, why does our father lie there idle? She replies, if they ask you what you saw was beautiful. Her mission has ended and now our mission shall begin. With your hijab, O oh my daughters, battle Yazid from within. With your hijab, O oh my daughters, battle Yazid from within. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Let's have a second, much louder salawat for the love of Sayyidah Zainab. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And indeed, peace be upon that Sayyidah Zainab. You know, they say, those of you who are, and I'm sure many of you here were blessed with the opportunity to visit the shrine of Sayyidah Zainab in Shah. Me personally, I've never had the opportunity. And they say we never expected, we never expected that one day we would not be able to visit the shrine of Sayyidah Zainab. And truly the heart breaks wishing that we were there to condole her on these occasions because how much did she go through between Ashura and Arba'in and after that till the end of her life? As she's walking, they say when she was walking as a captive, the daughter of Ali, as a captive, Shimmer would continue the, to bring the heads of Hussein and Abbas closer to her just to make her cry. They say as they carried the heads in the captive, eventually they came across a church or a monastery. And they asked the monk there if they could spend the night. The monk stood there and he just kept looking at this head on a spear. 
And he says, I swear, it was so bright, it embarrassed the heavens, the light of the heavens. He tells them, who does this head belong to? They reply, this is Hussein, son of Fatima al-Zahra, son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, grandson of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He said, woe be unto you. If Jesus had a son, we would place him upon our eyes. It was there, he paid them a hefty amount of money just to keep the head beside him. And some people say that he drew and illustrated the head of Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam. But I tell that monk, and I tell all of you about this monk, I say how I wish the monk that drew your severed head, O Hussein, if only he knew that beyond those 72, we all wish we were with you. All of us wish we were there. How I wish the monk that drew your severed head, if only he knew beyond those 72, we all wish we were with you. The dust settled, burnt out by a tear. Through its ashes, the eyes of death peer. Cries that break the dead wind. Cries that break bone, the dead wind would hear. Cries that break bone, the dead wind would hear. As Hussein's head is raised upon a spear. No hands comfort, gonna all hold dear. No hands comfort, gonna all those held dear. And by Zainab, no Abbas would appear. Over 72 dead, bathed in the blood that was shed, painted in dust, turned blood red as away captives are led. And yet she stands there, veiled by her piety, arose in ash, in calamity. Zain Eb, too, as there's one deity, and with her one Lord, two things were weighty. The two pronged sword made her worth mighty, and with two eyes she saw nothing but beauty. Her brother taught. And we know, to no tyrant do you bow. Haydar lives in her shadow, and roses grow from her sorrow. Ashura's eve, as skies become dim, Zainab's soldiers won what, with, what was within them. Habib's status recites a mahim. Why? Because the queen of Vail, Zainab, she said salam to him. The queen of Vail, Zainab, she said salam to him. They'd grin at death. They would grin at death. No face pale, nor grim. Torn, ripped apart, shattered limb from limb. Habib, Borer, and Zuhair chose the dust above the air. Hussein took John in despair, and with his own son, him he'd pair. Hussein stood there, holding those letters. Hussein stood there, holding those letters. Beneath his feet, the earth's core shatters. Who can help me? His lone tongue mutters. Who can help me? His lone tongue mutters. And Habib's corpse, for a moment, it flutters. I wish I were, but then my tongue stutters. I wish I were, but then my tongue stutters. Would I have really left? All my worldly matters? Would I have really left all my worldly matters? I am at war with myself. Could I have conquered myself and embraced death in itself or have left him all by himself? His call echoes. His call echoes, and today my tears heed. The grief in his soul, it makes my soul bleed. I am no captive, I am no captive. With Hussein I'm freed. Let my roads lead to which he would lead. O oh, needless one, O oh Lord, I pray in need. Lord, make Hussein's love my greatest deed. By the prayer for which he died, by the death that to all lied, by the battle cry he cried, I wish I were by his side. So Habib, come back. Habib, come back, let's return again. I have so many more with me that can soothe Zainab's pain. Today, millions for no worldly gain. Yearn that we were there, and to time we complain. Forget this world, forget its domain, because we shall never forget Hussein. Forget that for which we have wept. Forget pain and forget debt. Forget what's lost and what's kept. Hussein, we shall never forget, because there is no living nor worth of living without for him weeping and grieving what a great love so captivating daily and his day we are still reliving gone and yet he is giving and giving we believe 
and we'll keep believing. We believe and we'll keep believing. Hussein, don't let those eyes weep. Your companions, we are not asleep. The seeds of your love we reap and your story our tears shall keep. So tell that monk who holds your severed head. Tell that monk who holds your severed head that more are coming to die in your stead. To Karbala, millions I led, not yearning life, but yearning death instead. O oh, beloved, don't go far ahead. With your head, let our heads be behead. With your head, let our heads be behead. No, your day, it is not a day. It's today, not yesterday. Know that our hairs have become gray, wishing that we were there upon that day. Know that our hairs have become gray, wishing that we were there. Upon that day, Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. Let's have a second now, the Salawat. I would like to apologize for taking so much of your time, but just for the sake of Hawaij, Hajat, everyone here has a Hajj, everyone here has a wish. And there is a small line of poetry that I say, and truly, it's so true. I say, when it comes to Abu Fadl, my logic sways. Because who, has, who else has no hands and yet for millions praise? Who else has no hands and yet for millions praise? So just for the thawab of your wish, inshallah, may he grant you your wish, I would like to read the story of Abu Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. They say the most heartbreaking line of the maqtal about Abu Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam is where it says that his hands were cut but he kept on moving. The arrow pierced his eye, but he kept on moving. It was only when the arrow pierced the canteen where the water was kept, it says, Abbas What that means is Abbas stood confused. Why is he confused? Because he doesn't know if he should go back to the river and get the water, or if he should go towards the tents without any water. He's confused, and I swear to God, how much we hear about Abu Abbas Islam, I have never heard the line Mutahayra. He's confused in the entirety of his life. And one wonders what the zeal of Abbas went through, watching those daughters of Hussein dying from thirst, dying, dying. As if they couldn't speak anymore. They would gesture with their hands for water. As if their skin had turned pale and their pupils had rolled back into their eyes from that thirst. I swear to God, none of us will ever understand what three days of thirst, what three days of thirst can do to you. Especially to young girls, young daughters of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. I tell him, Abu Fadl, they are thirsty. That water, throw it away. He kneels. He kneels and watches them. They say that Abu Fadl Abbas would only kneel when he sits down. Why? So if someone needed anything, he would spring right up. He kneels and watches them. Anger fights patience in him. Each child has a problem because the thirst is mighty. One child's skin has turned white. Tongue as dry as desert night. One child cries from her fright saying, Abu Fadl, I'm thirsty. One child's skin has turned white. One tongue, one tongue is as dry as desert night. And one child cries out from her fright, Abu Fadl, I'm thirsty. One hand like a fist clenches. One hand for his sword reaches. And from one knee, the moon rises crying, I shall make them pay. I walk to him, my head is bowed. There is nothing of which I'm proud. On my grief, I place a shroud and I say, Hussein, they might die. He replies, brother, if you go, go with you, shall my shadow. The girls are thirsty. 
The girls are thirsty, I know, but who will hold my flag high? You remind me of Haidar, and the river is your Khaybar. I'll let you go get the water, but do not say goodbye to me. To the river, he sets course. A lion riding a horse, what is death? Their thirst is worse, no enemy dare come near. I wade in the blood that I shed. I wade in the blood that I shed. My white feathers, they turn blood red. By angels, my horse is led. I am the man without fear. From the daughters of Zahra, you have withheld the water. In tears, I saw their father, and you will pay for every tear. I have reached the riverbank. I have reached the riverbank, and I think of when they last drank. Now their pupils have all sank into the whites of their eyes. I have never admitted this. I have never admitted this. But my tongue burns in dryness. Should I remain waterless when water in front of me lies? In my two hands the water flows. In my two hands the water flows. And to my lips it comes close, but I remember their sorrows, and from my hand the water flies. I cry, O oh self, don't you dare, when their thirst is their despair. They gasp for water like it's air. Don't you let it touch your tongue. The water, I make it drown. The water, I make it drown. And I scare it with my frown, and I strangle my thirst down. Make me thirsty, shall no one. My hands fill up the canteen. To return towards them, I am keen. The river cannot bear this scene And it cries out Where have you gone toward the tents I would ride And their thirst still hurts me inside But behind the tree They would hide And they'd cut off my right hand Then my left hand I can't find then my left hand I can't find And then an arrow pierces my mind Blood from my head It makes me blind And then I fall towards the sand I look out toward the tents. I look out toward the tents and I hear as all those girls lament. My brother, my heart confronts and my goodbyes to him I send. My goodbyes to him I send. Ya Abba, salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Second salawat, please. <laughs> ya Abbas, I hope, inshallah, that by those tears that you shed for Abu Fadl, he will intercede and grant your wish, inshallah. I'd like to thank the organizers for, once again, allowing me the honor to serve all of you. And truly, I don't say it because I'm just saying it. I truly, truly mean it and believe it. It's such an honor for me, an honor that Abu Abdullah has given me to stand here before you and recite verses of poetry. I still remember when I was 17, 16 years old, just writing poems and putting them online. And I never thought that one day Imam Hussein would give me the honor of standing here in front of you and, and allowing me to let you hear these insignificant words. However, and I do know that my time is very limited, I have a habit every year when I come here to recite, and I'm honored to uh, be given the honor to recite, to read about a certain event. And it stems from a hadith from Imam Hassan al-Askir <laughs> He says there are five signs of the believer, five signs of the mu'min. One of them, is that they, play, they pray 51 rakat a day. And may Allah, inshallah, make us of those people, inshallah. And I speak to myself first. A second is that they wear a ring on their right hand. A third is that they prostrate on dust, as to, of course, remember their death and the fact that we shall return to dust. The fourth is that they say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim out loud. And the fifth is that they have a habit of always returning to Ziyarat al Arba'in of Imam Hussein. It's fascinating because when I was there, Alhamdulillah, I was honored to be given, I was given a great honor to uh, be there in Muharram. And inshallah, if Allah allows, return for Arba'in as well in Karbala. It's amazing because I was actually speaking to 
some of the people that used to live there before uh, the Ba'ath regime fell and Saddam Hussein was still in power. And they would tell me that you don't understand what oppression we went through just to mourn for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. One person told me if we wanted to cry for Imam Hussein, he tells me personally, he said, I would drive out of the city, make sure that no one is watching, there are no officers watching, no soldiers watching me. I would put on a tape, an old tape of an old reciter, and I would cry those small tears, making sure no one sees. One person told me we wanted to give out food for Abu Abdullah. But of course, you can't give out food for Abu Abdullah. It was illegal. Imagine, illegal to give out food for Imam Hussein. He goes, what we would do is we'd make sandwiches. And on the sandwich, we'd put a note, a small note, that says, please recite Surah Al-Fatiha for Hussein ibn Ali al-Qurayshi. Hussein, son of Ali, the Qurayshi. And that is, of course, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. And you imagine when you compare it to today, how much freedom we are given in mourning Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. There is even another story, even the, the Ziyarat al-Arba'in, by the way, they tell me that when we wanted to go for Ziyarat al-Arba'in, what we would do is that we would have to walk in the farms, in the gardens, and make sure no one sees you. Because that, of course, in Saddam's time, walking to Imam Hussein was illegal. Imagine walking for Ziyarat al-Arba'in Hussein was illegal. And it uh, incurred the death penalty. One person, I remember a friend was telling me, a story from one of his friends and he was saying that I was walking to uh, the ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. in the farms of course as you can't it's not like now when you walk in the street and there's tents everywhere there's muakib giving out food people people begging you to come eat with them flags being raised no it wasn't like that you have to walk in the farms and make sure no one sees you he was walking in the farms and he got stopped by a Ba'thi officer an officer that worked for Saddam's regime the man told him listen I know you're walking to Imam Hussein, just admit it to me. He said, no, I'm not walking to Imam Hussein. He goes, admit it to me. He says, no, I'm, I'm going to a friend's house, he lives over there. He goes, listen, admit to me that you're walking to Imam Hussein. I promise that I will not hurt you. I promise, that I can promise. The man replied, okay, I admit I'm walking to Imam Hussein. He said, okay, no problem, go. The man went to Ziyarat to Imam Hussein, finished his Ziyarat and he came back. He saw that everyone in his household was taken for execution. The man kept his promise. He said, I will not hurt you, but he killed all of his family. Imagine what they had to go through. Imagine what they had to go through for Ziyarat al arbaim So I want you all to keep in mind, and I obviously speak to myself as well, let's not belittle the blessing we have of going for Ziyarat al arbaim Imagine Sayyida Zainab over there in Sham. We used to visit her multiple times a year. Now you can't even go there. Allah forbid that one day the same thing will happen to in, in Karbala. But even if it stays open, inshallah, till the end of time, understand that people died. People had their families killed just for you to visit Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So inshallah, I pray that all of us together, this year and every year, will head out for this yard to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And I say, the prayer that my eyes made before they'd even seen is Allah bless me with his yard al-arba'in. قال محمد وعلي محمد صلوات The prayer my eyes made The prayer my eyes made before they had even seen Is oh Allah bless me with Ziyarat al-Arba'een Before I became Hussein called my name On earth my birth, his earth, my worth. God created me from clay, and yet he teased me with Hussein's dust. Yearning Karbala's scent, reaching him was not a choice, but a must. Since then, children, till when their men have a yearning to reach Hussein's grave, and reach it year after year. I watched this before I was created, and I yearned to shed a tear. I prayed, earth swayed, dismayed. I made a promise to God and Muhammad that when I was created, I will reach the land that swims in the dust on which I prostrated a moth to a flame I walk I walk we flock they mock they talk but I erase it with the sparks of love from my two walking feet for beneath my feet heaven lies if death I ever meet lion laying real men begin lion laying real men begin I walk and I won't need a lion's help for I have become one in fact I see lions they shy away when towards them I come I hush I crush in flesh Daesh every step I take crushes their heads and crushes terrorism and with every Hajj and Umrah it crushes Wahhabism 
to bring them to bring them to shame mighty weighty 40 plenty are the days which we are which we are given to crush all of hussein's enemies mighty weighty 40 plenty are the days which we are given to crush all of hussein's enemies and we crush them with our numbers which can outweigh the seven seas listen glisten hasten shorten the list of excuses you've chosen to not stand before his grave understand that your master craves you just as much as him you crave seize it seize it own it live it light it the fire that burns within you crying out hussein's name daily be the one that reaches his his grave and cries out in tears finally cry out void of blame heartbreak heartbreak hearts break I ache awake and alive is the morning of Hussein despite how much we have died despite how many times our tears for our master we had to hide names crossed hearts tossed souls lost what cost and now a holocaust names crossed hearts tossed souls lost what cost a holocaust of lovers of Hussein that lasted for centuries and now our freedom on the road towards Hussein the whole world sees love Chars are scars and stars are ours for every soul that walks towards Hussein a star watches in awe the tears enter the eyes of Fitrus and from Jibra'il's eyes they pour what wonderful fame so rise up rise up rise up don't stop don't swap don't drop that flag that you're holding to show Abbas that his flag can still fly every time you twirl it it brings joy to his one working eye incite his might with light your right to walk holding his flag and each time it flutters his heart flutters remember what he taught you besides that flag nothing else matters he's kneeling he's kneeling he's healing the wailing and the complaining and whatever else comes into his shrine as people beg from him they beg God and Abu Fadl they beg God and Abu Fadl and through him God gives all to them rise up rise up don't stop don't swap don't drop the flag that you're holding to show abbas that his flag can still fly every time you twirl it it brings joy to his one working eye in sight his might would light your right to walk holding his flag and every time it flutters his heart flutters remember what he taught you besides that flag nothing else matters besides that flag nothing else matters kneeling healing wailing and complaining and whatever else comes into his shrine as people beg from him they beg God and Abu Fadl and through him God gives all to them he comes he cries just the same so don't fail don't fail don't fall recall the wail of the daughters of Hussein as they were marched upon that desert they walk with you when you walk they walk with you when you walk don't you dare question it believe it don't quit don't sit commit own it the length of that road shall shorten the road between you and heaven but what is heaven really what is heaven really when you're walking to Ali's children safely strongly proudly Ali and his son Hussein shall embrace you when you at last reach his shrine and he'll tell you I'll come to your grave just as you had come to mine he'll tell you I'll come to your grave just as you had come to mine death I overcame the prayer the prayer my eyes aid the prayer my eyes made before they had even seen. Oh Allah, bless me with Ziyarat al Arba'in. Oh Allah, bless me with Ziyarat al Arba'in. Thank you so much. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants all of you, inshallah, the Ziyarat al Arba'in every year, inshallah. Thank you so much for listening to me. Wassalamu alaikum, Jami'an. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bara Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salawat. Love of Sayyidah Zainab and all of the women and children who embarked on that walk initially. Aflaham and Salla Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Imam al Sadiq said that even if you go to Hajj every year, even if you go to Hajj every year of your life, but you do not go to the Ziyarah of Hussein ibn Ali then you have abandoned one of your obligations towards Allah and his messenger. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it mandatory on the believers to fulfill the rights of the 
the same. And the ziyara is obligatory upon every Muslim. Such is the emphasis placed by the a'imma on conducting the ziyara of Arba'een and the ziyara of Imam al Hussein in general. There's one thing that really shatters the heart when you're conducting this war. And again, again minds away, away from Leicester, minds, minds towards Karbala. And I remember it was the first, the first time and the only time, time I've done, done this walk. And as you as come, you come to, the to the end and you're, you're, you're tired, tired, you want to shower, shower, you just want to rest. rest. And then you go through this checkpoint. And I remember some of the guys went through and as opposed to just being a checkpoint that's straight, it was one that was on a corner. So we're going through, some of the guys went first, went round the corner. We just saw that they just stopped. And at this point, you've seen these welcome to Karbala signs for the past six hours. And for those six hours, you're thinking, when is it? When is it happening? And it was at that point when you're thinking, why is he stopped? You get round that corner, and I swear to you, that feeling when you're on the street that leads to Al Abbas's shrine. <laughs> Many of us here, our parents have always given us this superhero to look up to, and that is Allah Abbas. And when it's that first time that you get to see him, that man who when you were five, you kind of just looked up to as this glorious superhero that could, was just invincible. And then day after day, you learn more and more, and then you initially hear about his tragedy, and then probably when you're about 10 and 11, it then starts to click as to what it means to lose either of your arms, let alone both. And then you start to develop that emotional connection with Sayyid Ruqayya and the Atfal and the orphans. And then you realize what it means when the arrow pierces the canteen that he was holding. And then at that moment, when you turn that corner and you see the dome of Abbas, There was two reactions, three actually. Some of them just stood there, and these are guys, you know, who's, you know, you never see them shed a tear, and they literally just stood there, bags dropped, and just shaking their heads, bawling with tears. There are others who I swear to you, they saw it and just ran. Forget the group, they just ran. And there are others who get on their hands and legs and they call to Allah al Abbas. But the common thing is that each of them were just drawn to this magnet, a magnet of love. And I really hope we all get that opportunity, inshallah. Before we move on to our final recital before the Masai begins, I just wish to share with you one more hadith. And this comes from the one who was ill in Karbala, our fourth Imam, Imam al Sajjad. He says, Surely I have never brought to mind the martyrdom of the children of Fatima, except that I have been choked with tears due to it. And let that sink in. Let that sink in for the rest of this evening. For when our next reciters come up, connect with their words and voices. And when the Masa'ib begins, connect with the words and voices. When the Latmiya begins, stay and connect with the voices. Form the lines and think that you're there in front of them. Imam Sajjad says, surely I have never brought to mind the martyrdom of the children of Fatima, except that I have choked with tears due to it. We, wake, we welcome our final reciters before the Masaib, Shabir and Abbas Tajani with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Even if they cut my body, 
into a thousand pieces each piece will call your name your name who